All right. Well, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to today's graphing group. So today we have Shooks in. So you can please present yourself shortly before starting the presentation. Uh, not too much to need to introduce. So, so, so I'm I'm Shuxi from Microsoft uh, Research Airforces, and it's really great uh, to have this chance to 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 share this work with you. So, so maybe we can directly start. Yeah, let's go. Let's start. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, actually, uh, thank you very much for coming on today's uh, presentation. And uh, today I'm going to talk about our recent paper. Uh, the title is Distributional Graphomer Towards uh, Equilibrium Distribution Prediction for Molecular System with Deep Learning. Uh, this paper is a uh, joint effort between many colleagues uh, in Microsoft, uh, and you can find it on the archive preprint server. And also, there is a demo page uh, you can you can watch, play, and uh, in interactive with it. Okay, so so uh, let's begin from the uh, alpha four two to to illustrate the problem setting of this paper uh, uh, we we study. So uh, actually, uh, what's the problem uh, that this paper study? Uh, uh, if you are familiar with uh, protein structure prediction and alpha flow two, we can we can know that uh, proteins are very essential to life, and uh, understanding their structure uh, can facilitate a uh, uh, mechanistic uh, understanding for their function. Uh, for we we always say that structure determines function, right? So for example, knowing the structure of a protein uh, can help us to design drugs uh, that can bind to its uh, active site uh, and uh, modulate its uh, activity. Uh, traditional protein structure determination relies on the experimental method, uh, such as X-ray, uh, crystallography, LMR, uh, spectroscopic, or cryo-EM, uh, electronic uh, microscopy. Uh, however, uh, this method is uh, often very expensive, time-consuming, and also require high-quality samples, uh, which limits the structure uh, coverage of the protein universe. Therefore, uh, accurate computational approach are needed to address this gap and to enable the large-scale structure of bioinformatics. Uh, so here is AFR42. Uh, we, we all know that uh, developed by DeepMind has achieved unprecedented uh, accuracy and speed in predict, uh, predicting a uh, protein structure from amino acid uh, sequence. Uh, it used a deep learning network uh, to learn the pairwise distance and orientation between every pair of uh, amino acid and to optimize the uh, 3D structure uh, that satisfies this constraint. Uh, but, you know, uh, protein structure prediction uh, is not the, the end of the story. Uh, in fact, protein are not static entities, uh, but dynamic ones. They can change their shape, uh, conformation, uh, and also structure in response to different uh, systems, uh, such as temperature, pH, ligand binding, and also post-translational uh, modifications, uh, so on. Uh, these conformational changes are often essential for the function and the regulation of uh, proteins. Uh, for example, some proteins can switch between different states uh, to perform different tasks, such as the uh, enzyme catalyst, uh, signal transduction, and the gene regulation. Here you can see an uh, animation of the protein dynamics uh, uh, as observed by molecular dynamics simulation. So, uh, therefore, the equilibrium distribution uh, is actually more important uh, and, uh, uh, than the uh, static structure of the protein, and is what uh, is actually what scientists really want. Why do we uh, do they uh, uh, care about the equilibrium distribution and not just the most uh, probable or stable structure? Well, the equilibrium distribution contains much more information than a single structure, and it can help us understand the thermodynamics, uh, kinetics, uh, kinetics uh, functions of the proteins, and so on. For example, the equilibrium distribution can tell us how many stable states uh, a protein has, uh, what are their relative probabilities, uh, how they are connected uh, by transition pathway, uh, and how they are affected 
by external factors such as mutations, ligands, or uh, environmental conditions. To illustrate, sorry, let me uh, get my laser pointer. Okay, so to illustrate the importance of the equilibrium distribution, let me show you an example of the protein uh, that has two stable uh, states uh, corresponding to different functions. This protein called uh, BRF kinase uh, protein uh, and is involved in cell growth and survival. BRF kinase can switch between an uh, active uh, and uh, 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 inactive state depending on the binding of its uh, substrate and uh, inhibit, uh, inhibitors. The active state has a, a loop region that is open, while the inactive has a loop region that is closed. The figures show the energy landscape of the BRAF kinase, uh, which is a representation of the potential energy as a function of the conformational coordinates. The energy landscape have two, has two values uh, cors uh, corresponding to two stable states and a barrier. Uh, this is the barrier uh, corresponding to the transition state. The depth of the valley uh, indicates the probability of the state, and the height of the barrier indicates the rate of the transition. Now, if we use alpha fold two, uh, two, this is uh, the result uh, given by alpha fold two. Uh, actually, uh, we, if we predict the structure of the BRF kinase uh, from its sequence, uh, we get a structure that is neither open nor closed. Uh, but somewhere in between. Uh, this is structure is not a good representation of the equilibrium distribution, as it does not capture the two distinct uh, distinct states and their probability. In fact, this, this structure may not even exist uh, in reality, as it may be unstable or unfavorable. Uh, actually, although uh, alpha 2 can sometimes predict a structure that is close to one of the state, uh, stable states, uh, it still does not tell me anything about the other state uh, or the transition between them. Therefore, alpha 2 is not sufficient for studying uh, protein dynamics or function uh, and function. Uh, this is not the only example uh, where the equilibrium distribution is important. Uh, there are many other cases uh, where protein dynamics and the function are governed by the distribution of the states rather than a single structure. For example, uh, I, I will give you a very interesting example. Uh, one of uh, or, or my colleagues uh, recently published a paper, uh, last year published a paper that uh, used the molecular dynamics simulation to explain why the Omicron variants of the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, is more infectious than the wild type. Uh, if, if you can remember, the Omicron is more, more badly, uh, more bad uh, than the wild type, right? Uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, infects human cells by using its spike protein, uh, the protein called the spike protein, which has uh, three states. Uh, 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 three states. Uh, actually, one of the states, uh, uh, well, uh, 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 if the spike protein were in uh, one of the states, uh, it will be effect. Uh, it can affect the human cell, uh, but not the other two. So after the uh, the long MD simulation, uh, we can see that the distribution of this spike protein of om Omicron, uh, the uh, that one uh, in uh, that one state uh, which can infect the human cell. Uh, is uh, is more uh, has a very higher probability uh, of being in the in that state uh, than other two states, and also being very higher probability than the wild type. Uh, this is a uh, explanation uh, of that why Omicron variants uh, is more dangerous than the wild type of the uh, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, however, uh, these differences cannot be uh, uh, told by using alpha 4 2 to predict the structure of the spike protein, uh, as both of the wild type and the Omicron variants have very similar structures. Therefore, we need a method that can predict the equilibrium distribution of the protein conformation rather than a single structure. OK, so next page. Uh, actually, no, not uh, only the distribution, but also it can tell us uh, to compute some, some macroscopic properties. Such as energy, free, uh, such as entropy, free energy, or bonding affinity, or some, for example, reaction rate of the catalyst. Uh, these microscopic properties are actually the uh, statical average of some microscopic uh, quantities over the equilibrium distribution, according to the principles of the statical mechanics. 
For example, the reaction rate of a catalyst uh, depends on the probability of the reaction being uh, in the reactive state and the transition rate uh, between the reactive and the non-reactive states. And the binding affinity, uh, which is uh, very important in the drug discovery, uh, actually depends on the free energy difference. Uh, you can see the free energy difference uh, between the bonded and the unbounded states, uh, which is also related to the probability of the drug molecule being in the binding pocket of the target protein. Therefore, to calculate this uh, microscopic uh, property accurately, uh, we need to know the equilibrium distribution of the molecule conformations. Okay, so that's why we uh, always say that the distribution is much more important than static uh, structure, one single structures. Uh, so uh, if, if uh, the distribution is so important, then how the scientist obtain this uh, distributions? Actually, in tr uh, traditionally, uh, the answer is simply, uh, such as uh, Markov uh, MCMC sampling, enhanced, uh, enhanced sampling, or uh, MD simulation, or something else. Uh, this, uh, these are all methods that try to generate a large number of molecular conformations that follow the equilibrium distribution. However, all these methods are very expensive and slow, and they often cannot sample the distribution very quickly. So, uh, this is uh, an animation of the MD uh, simulation. Uh, and this page is very, very important in the whole presentation. So uh, what this page try to say is that uh, why the uh, traditional sampling are so slow? Uh, what is the fundamental reason? And why do we think that the current method that use AI to accelerate simulation or sampling are not essential? And they do not address uh, the right direction. Let's look at the fatal flaw of the existing uh, existing sampling method. This flaw is that all the current sampling methods are st statistically dependent sampling. Please uh, look at the, the, the left figure of this slide, uh, which shows that a distribution with three peaks uh, with a probability of 20%, uh, 15%, uh, and 30%, respectively. If we know the probability density function of this distribution, then we can very easy Right, we can very easily to sample it in a statistically in the independent way. Uh, or every sampling can guarantee that we can sample the left side uh, with a twenty percent probability, the middle with a fifty probability, and the right with a thirty percent probability. I may only need, for example, ten samples uh, to recover the whole distribution. However, unfortunately, uh, for the molecular system distribution, usually, for example, a uh, Boltzmann distribution, we do not know its probability density function. Uh, this dis distribution is an equation as a, uh, here, uh, and uh, actually, uh, what we do know is that uh, here, uh, the energy function of the molecules, uh, which is the numerator, uh, nu numerator of this equation. And now there are many force fields uh, can easily calculate the energy function. But uh, the difficulties uh, lies into the Z at the bottom, uh, which is called that in, in statistics, the people call it the normalizing factor. And the, 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 in the statistical uh, mechanics, uh, people call them uh, the partition function. Uh, the role of this thing uh, is to ensure that uh, the sum of the whole probability the density function is equal to one, right? For example, the, the probability, uh, probability of the running today is uh, 0.8. Then the probability of not running today must be 0.2, uh, not 0.5 or something like that, or something others. But in the molecular system, uh, this thing, this one, this thing, uh, is very difficult to, to calculate, uh, uh, it is not available and cannot be calculated. Therefore, for the Boltzmann distribution, we cannot sample directly from its uh, probability density function, right? So how can we still sample if Z is unknown? Fortunately, uh, statics, uh, st staticians are very clever. They, they invent a lot of methods to, to sample without knowing the Z, such as MCMC sampling or uh, other yeah, for example, rejection sampling or some, something so on. But the biggest feature, uh, the biggest trade-off of this sampling method is that they are st statically dependent sampling. 
as shown in this 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 figure. Uh, they have to base each sampling on the result of the previous sampling. For example, uh, if uh, this time uh, we sample at here, the next time we either sample here or sample here. Uh, you can see that uh, the the sample must around uh, of this uh, this uh, this sample. Uh, and the consequence uh, of such a statistic, a statistically uh, dependent sampling is that uh, a very large number of the samples are required uh, to recover uh, the distribution. Uh, these sampling trajectories have to find a way to jump from one state to another state, but this is extremely difficult for molecular system. You know that this is because the conformational space of the molecular system is very high dimensional. Uh, and for a stable structure nearby, uh, working in any direction, uh, we all encountered a very, a very high energy barrier uh, that bounces itself back. Uh, so, so this this transition is often called a real event because it's very real. Uh, it's really very real. So, however, uh, just uh, jumping from one state to another state uh, is not enough, uh, but also must repeatedly jump jump back and forth until it changes to the equilibrium to accurately reflect the real, uh, relative probability between different states. This leads to the traditional sampling method being very slow and limited uh, by this uh, fatal uh, flaw of the statically dependency, uh, st statical dependency. And most of the methods that use AI to accelerate this sampling process do not fund fundamentally solve this problem. A typical example is that uh, a lot of people to use the AI to approximate the force field. Uh, you, you must know some familiar uh, work that uh, use AI to 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 approximate a force field to make a AI force field to accelerate the sum, uh, simulation and sampling. In fact, for some high uh, barrier changes, uh, even if AI can accelerate many many times, it can also not cross the energy barrier and simulate those uh, state transition in the uh, accessible time. Okay, next page. So how can we use AI to truly revolutionize this field? We can be, uh, we, we have been thinking about this problem a lot of, uh, 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 a very long time, uh, which is that why the AI can solve this uh, photo problem uh, in sampling, uh, namely the st statistical dependency of the sampling. So uh, actually, uh, uh, those who are familiar with generative AI may immediately react uh, is it that uh, generative AI in the image generation field doing this? Actually, it is absolutely right. Generative AI is actually modeling the distribution and sampling it independently and identically, uh, IID sampling. In fact, there are many uh, technical of the generative AI, and they are basically trying to solve the problem that how to sample independently and identically when the Z uh, is not available. Of course, these methods have different tricks, such as uh, in the GAN, uh, which uh, construct a min-max game to bypass the calculation of the uh, and the VAE, uh, uh, which uh, choose a lower bound to approximate. Uh, I, I won't go into the details here today. Uh, and uh, we choose actually we choose the diffusion model. Uh, I will talk uh, and I will talk why we choose the diffusion model later. Uh, but of course, one reason is that it has why uh, the Best performance today uh, in the image generation field, uh, but there are also other important reasons which I will introduce in the next few slides. So, uh, what can we uh, do with this model after we have it? Actually, uh, we can directly predict the distribution. Uh, for the original two branch of the work, the first one is the structure uh, prediction, uh, which can only get a point of the distribution. And the second one is the uh, heavy simulation, uh, which is very heavy and costly. Uh, but now we have to the generative AI uh, technology. We can quickly get the complete distribution information directly. OK, so let's go back to the diffusion model. Uh, actually, another important reason why we choose the distribution is that although this, the diffusion model has only become popular in the image field in the past uh, two years, and also, for example, uh, uh, speech uh, and uh, natural language field. Uh, but if we look back 
as some of the original papers on the diffusion model from, for example, two, uh, 2008 or two, uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2010, uh, you will find that uh, they wrote the diffusion model uh, paper very clearly that the diffusion model is inspired by the thermodynamics. dynamics. In fact, that uh, from its principle and applications, it's very natural to use it to solve the simple problem in the thermodynamics. dynamics. Therefore, at that time, we had the feeling about one year, one and a half years ago, we had the a feeling that the diffusion model should not only shine in the uh, image generation field, but also uh, so called the insight from uh, uh, thermodynamics uh, and the innovation back to thermodynamics. And uh, I will not introduce the principle of the diffusion model here because as <laughs> I have seen uh, a lot of uh, many previous uh, issues of the LGG uh, and uh, find that the, the, maybe there are quite a few works uh, using diffusion model and I believe many of the audience may be more familiar with diffusion model than me. So so I will not go in very depth in, in the technology of the diffusion here. But uh, uh, with, uh, we can simply say that with this, uh, framework, uh, we uh, we can basically have the idea and the approach of a distributional graph model DIG. Uh, we can simply watch this video uh, to show the capability of DIG. Uh, we did actually we did four systems, uh, namely uh, protein conformational sampling, uh, uh, ligand binding sampling, catalyst uh, uh, sorbate sampling, and finally an inverse design scenario. That's it. Okay. Now, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, I have a question. If you go back to uh, the, yeah, the, um, the other slide when you were showing all the applications that you did with the distributional graph former. Uh, this one? Oh, the next slide. Next, next slide. slide, this one. Next one. Next one. This is a video. Is it? Is it? No, next one again. Like, uh, just uh, one sorry. Is this page? okay? I will introduce this page now. <laughs> okay, never, never mind. Sorry for okay. Okay, uh, let, let's let, let's go. Uh, I, I will talk about the, uh, for example, training the, the loss, the, the framework, the, the, the method uh, later. But let me one by one to introduce. The, there are a lot of interesting things I, I want to talk about and share today. Uh, so 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 please uh, wait for a moment. Uh, so now let's uh, look at the specific uh, framework of DIG. Uh, actually, uh, for a complex uh, distribution for a mo molecule system, for example, the equilibrium distribution, uh, after the diffusion process, uh, so from right to to left, uh, it will transform into a very simple distribution. For example, a, a standard Gaussian distribution. And the deep learning model can act as the uh, score model uh, in this process uh, to get the supervision from each uh, each step uh, of this uh, PD equation uh, to to uh, for, for training. Uh, I will uh, talk about it later. Uh, the, and the, the, that the supervision uh, of this framework will, will have two sources. Uh, besides the common data, uh, the common data samples. Uh, another source is the energy function, uh, which I will introduce uh, in detail later. Uh, then when we want to use the uh, trend uh, model for inference, uh, that is uh, to do the sampling, uh, we can use the reverse diffusion process, uh, starting from a simple distribution, a simple Gaussian distribution, uh, condition on some uh, descriptors of the molecule system. Uh, for example, the uh, if you can if you want to sample the protein structure, uh, you can use the uh, just like alpha four two, you can use the amino acid sequence, and uh, also for example the ligand binding problem, you can you can use the for example small molecule two D graph or something else, uh, and the sample uh, and sample out the conformations that conform the equilibrium distribution of the molecular system uh, through this reverse diffusion process. And I will talk about how this model is trained later, but I hope to talk about one thing here first. That is, once we have trained this model, what we can get? In fact, we can get three things. Um, each of them are very exciting. Uh, the first thing is what I just mentioned. We can use the reverse dif uh, diffusion process for sampling. Uh, that is di directly generate structures that conform the, the, to the equilibrium distribution. And the second thing is density estimation. 
uh, which is very also very important. So uh, who uh, those who are familiar with the generative models may know about uh, 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 more may know more about this. Uh, I will briefly uh, explain what this means. Uh, when we talk about uh, a distribution, uh, for example, uh, we talk about the distribution prediction. Uh, what we are predicting, or how do we define a distribution? In fact, there are two ways to define a distribution. Right, one is the uh, very simple, the prob uh, probability density function, uh, such as the Gaussian fu the Gaussian function. We can easily write the prob uh, PDF, right? Prob probability density function of the Gaussian function, uh, Gaussian distribution. Then this can be said to define a distribution. Uh, but there are many complex uh, distributions, such as the Boltzmann distribution, uh, 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 Bo uh, Boltzmann distribution of the the, the monetary system, or for example, in the image generation task. Uh, what's the distribution? The, the, what's the probability density function of this image uh, image distribution that conforms to human vision, uh, which are actually impossible to write the probability density function. So what what do we do in this case? Uh, we often use a sampler to implicitly define a distribution. That is, as long as we sa uh, um, our sampler samples enough samples, uh, and these samples are all conform uh, to the, the distribution, then we can also say that this sampler defines the distribution, right? Uh, it, it's a very simple concept. Then uh, you will actually find that both, uh, for example, molecular dynamics uh, simulation and uh, also diffusion models that can generate lifelike uh, images, including DIG uh, that can do the structural sampling, are actually samplers, using sampler to define the distribution. But the diffusion model has an adv uh, additional advantage. Uh, that is, uh, it can really estimate the density. Th this is the second uh, thing we can get. Uh, what is the benefit of this? In fact, the benefit is very big. Because as I said before, for an equilibrium distribution prediction problem, in addition to being able to efficiently and accurately sample out the samples that conform to this distribution, we also need to calculate some macroscopic static uh, quantities uh, for the of the molecular systems, such as for example uh, free energy, uh, or some 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 something like that. Uh, that is very important to the real world applications, right? For example, drug discovery, material discovery, catalyst design, or something else. Uh, and uh, this, for example, this microscopic uh, 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 quantities, well, just like for example, uh, free energy, which is related to the entropy part of the uh, part of the distribution. So we must know the exact density to do this. Otherwise, if we only want, uh, if if we only have a sampler, this is no way to talk about calculating this uh, microscopic statis, uh, statical quantities. For example. For a sampler like uh, microdynamics, it can only sample uh, if you want to calculate the entropy. Uh, you still have to use other methods, such as some, for example, harmonic based method or something else to estimate the entropy. And sorry. And the diffusion model can directly use a method called flow ODE to calculate the density. Uh, I won't go into the details here uh, about how to do it, uh, mainly to talk about the significance of being able to calculate density in this problem. But please note that not all generative models can do this. Uh, and currently, the general models, uh, typical generative models, can estimate the density uh, well. Uh, may, may, maybe, for example, flow, flow based model uh, and also the diffusion model. Uh, uh okay, this is the second uh second point that very is very important to the macroscopic property calculation. Uh, this is uh very important to the uh, the statistical uh, mechanism. And oh, the third part. Uh yes, please. Oh yeah, thank you. That's very cool. So have you do you have any comment on using elbow to you know estimate the density because you know doing the this uh, continuous normalizing flow is kind of expensive in practice. Do you have like comments on that? This is actually is the uh, best I always have, like just using the elbow. It's very quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very quick, but it's less accurate. You know, the 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 variance and the noise in the, the for example, this uh, microscopic property uh, estimation uh, usually require a very high accuracy, a precision of the accuracy. So, so in terms of the speed, uh, 
uh, we rather than to use a more accurate density estimation method to calculate the, the, the density to, to get a better performance of the, the microscopic property, for example, entropy, free energy, or something else. Okay, got it, got it. I, I, I have never tried to, to use uh, an elbow to estimate, but uh, theoretically it can estimate. Uh, but uh, in practically, uh, in practical, I guess uh, it will uh, affect uh, some some final real application. Uh, I, I I guess so. Okay, yeah, that, that makes okay. sense. Just okay, it's a uh, memory intensive to. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, actually, let, let me accelerate or or progress a lot of things behind. So, um, uh, the the third point is that even more interesting. I I think. Um, actually, uh, we we talk about uh, we we uh we call it inverse design or uh, property guided uh generation. Mm. Uh, uh, you may all know that there are two ways to do conditional generation with diffusion model in the image generation field. One is called the classifier free, and uh, the other is called classifier guide. Uh, actually, in the image generation field, uh, people prefer to use the uh classifier free method. Uh, but uh, it has nothing to do with uh, today's topic, so, so so I want to focus on the classifier gui guided method. Uh, what does this method allow us to do? Uh, it allows us to, instead of having to, uh, if even we uh, do the conditional generation, uh, uh, it allows us to, instead of having to collect a lot of these conditional training pairs to train a lot of models, actually, uh, you need to train uh, one model for one condition, uh, and the, the generation task is very uh, and also the generation task is very difficult, uh, and the molecular space is very large, so it it is uh, uh, it, uh, it's extremely required that a lot of data is needed to achieve a good result and generalization for this conditional generation setting. Uh, you know, we for example for uh, for condition one, uh, we need to collect a lot of Data pair condition one, uh, uh, data one, uh, x x y pair pair to train one condition generation model. Uh, however, uh, this is very difficult to achieve in the molecular field. You know that uh, we don't have enough data, is especially for uh, each condition. Uh, you need to collect a, a lot of data to train a separate conditional generation model. But this classifier guide method allow us to only need to train an un unconditional generator and have some forward pr forward property predictor. Uh, for example, this one, uh, P Px given y, uh, which is actually very easy to train and obtain. Uh, actually, you know, we can even search for many uh, property predictor from the Microsoft uh, Azure service. Uh, you, you can just simply serve you. You can you can get a lot of property predictor for for many property of different molecule system, uh, because it's uh, so this forward predictor is very easy to train and uh, to obtain, and uh, this uh, provides the scientists with extremely convenient and flexible, uh, uh for the good inverse design capability, uh, capability. For example, I want to sample structures to meet some properties as much as possible. Then using this method uh, will be very flexible and convenient and effective. Uh, well, I just want to simply tell how this uh, classifier guided can do. You can see that in this reverse diffusion process, uh, if we add nothing here, uh, it is an unconditional generation. Right, uh, but if we have a pre predictor class, uh, uh, a property pre a predictor, it can act as a bias uh, during your diffusion process. Uh, for example, uh, previously we want to diffuse uh, at one direction, but if you add a bias, uh, then then you can bias uh, to your your favored uh, property uh, during the sampling process. Uh, that's very interesting and uh, gives the scientists very more convenient and uh, effective uh, flexibility. Okay, that's the three capabilities that the once we train this model, uh, we can uh, obtain. And uh, now let's uh, briefly talk about the model structure. Uh, actually, we uh, although we use diffusion model, right? Uh, we we still need a deep learning architecture to capture the structural information in the in the, especially the molecular uh, molecule structural information uh, in the diffusion process. Uh, we used the graph model, uh, developed by our team before. 
Uh, the graphomer model is actually one of the earliest uh, pure transformer model on graph uh, data. And the reason we want to do this, uh, we want to invent the graphomer, is because that we observed a trend at that time, two years, about two years ago. At that time, uh, that is the, uh, you know, in the sequence modeling field, uh, at that time, no one used uh, RNN and uh, LSTM anymore, but uh, instead fully switched uh, to the transformer. And this trend also spread uh, to the computer vision field, where people no longer use CNN, but uh, start, uh, begin to use VIT vision transformer. I don't know whether you, if, if you can understand the underlying reason for this, uh, is, is it because that VIT has much better performance than CNN? Actually not. Uh, like uh, if you see the first uh, VIT paper uh, in the, uh, if I remember right, is in the 2020 iClear conference uh, meeting, uh, the first uh, VIT uh, uh, image was to uh, 16 uh, times 16, uh, blah, 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 uh, 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 the first uh, vision transformer paper, you can see actually VIT did not outperform the most powerful uh, CNN at that time. So why people choose to switch from CNN to vision transformer, but not stay in convolutional network. Um, the reason why people switch uh, in various fields uh, is that uh, actually uh, transformer is a very weak inductive, inductive bias model, uh, which has the advantage of the better scalability in the case of large scale data and the large model or parameter size which provides a possibility of training a foundation model uh, in various fields. Of course, today, ChatGPT came out and people may realize again uh, the power of a foundation model, but in fact, uh, when we designed the graphomer, we hope to achieve this effect on the graph and the molecule data. Graphomer is actually equal, uh, equal to a pure transformer plus minimal inductive bias to ensure that it can capture graph structural information. And then we also follow the uh, same minimal inductive bias idea uh, and later made the graphomer into an equivalent version. This is all, sorry. So, so this is the, the deep learning model architecture uh, we used uh, in DIG. Okay, next page. Uh, let's talk about the training. Uh, in fact, uh, we use two kinds of the supervision signal, or say the training of uh, the loss function. So first one, uh, the, the bottom one, uh, is uh, actually the common database training. Uh, as long as we collect enough confirmations that conform to the equilibrium distribution, we can train this model. Uh, this is very common uh, and a general training method of the diffusion model, uh, such as in the image generation field. Uh, this loss is used for training. Um, people collect a lot of uh, image image text pairs that that conform to the the the, the uh, image uh, vision uh, that conform to human vision of the image distribution. Uh, and however, you you must also be able to think about uh, this uh, is that in fact, uh, because of the complexity of the molecular dynamics simulation, is too high. Uh, only a very, very small amount of data can be called equilibrium distribution uh, in this field. So using data as the only source of the separation signal is definitely not enough. Uh, so in fact, we use another source of the separation uh, signal here, uh, which is the energy function. Uh, uh, how does this uh, equation comes from? In fact, it's very simple. It's, uh, it's to swap, uh, exchange the P and the Q of the database loss KL diver uh, the, the KL divergence of this 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 loss. Uh, you you just uh, simply exchange the P and the Q, uh, then you can get this energy based uh, supervision signal. And what is the benefit of this signal? First of all, uh, you can think of the, that the energy function must have the complete uh, equilibrium distribution information, of course. Uh, secondly, uh, this loss actually does not require, please, please listen carefully, this loss actually does not require any requirements on whether the data 
uh, obey to the equilibrium distribution or not. That is, you can, for example, randomly select a few conformations uh, as long as the energy function can be calculated. And uh, it can be used as the supervision to train the model. So we also call it, uh, internally, we ca also call it a data-free loss uh, compared with uh, this data-based loss. Uh, but uh, this loss has also a big drawback. Uh, that is, as you know, that this diffusion model has a, a very long diffusion steps, uh, such as uh, 500 or 1,000 diffusion time steps. And in the traditional uh, data-based uh, loss, um, every time step uh, has the supervision, uh, which uh, is also, you, you can see that uh, here is the time step T, right? So, uh, uh, so which which is the this is also this is stepwise supervision is very important. It's one of the important reason for the why the diffusion model can be trained very efficiently. But this loss, you will find that there is not T in it, right? That is, it only has the loss at the the, the last uh, diffusion step, which will greatly reduce uh, its training efficiency. Therefore, to solve this problem, we also inspire from the by the PIN, uh, you know, physical inform neural network. In fact, uh, we know that the this diffusion process uh, is in accordance with the focal plane equation, uh, focal plane equation, and it should be in accordance uh, with uh, every uh, time step. So I can use this. Uh, we can use this equation to construct a stepwise PIN loss to train this network. Right, uh, it, 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 the, the, the idea is very simple, and uh, this thing looks actually, actually looks very uh, pretty nice in the theory. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I have to manage your expectation here. That is that it's actually very difficult to 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 turn this to optimize this to to use this supervision because that there are a lot of numerical problems and the optimi uh, optimization problems. I will give you an example. Uh, although theoretically I can choose any conformation uh, and uh, throw it into the energy energy function, right, to to calculate the, the energy, and then I, I can use this uh physical informed precision loss. Uh, but uh, you can imagine that the energy of this conformation often vary a very large range, such as uh from the uh two to uh, for example uh third power uh to to uh, 12 powers. <laughs> you can imagine that if uh, if the, the optimization process has such data in the samples, for example, 10, 10 to the 12th power, uh, it will instantly make your model diverge and uh, explosive. Uh, so so you need to a lot of fun, uh, you, 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 you need a lot of, a, a lot of, for example, numerical tricks and the optimization tricks uh, to make it real real work uh, in the in the in the framework. Okay. Can I ask uh, a question about the, yeah, please. the second term? It's very uh, previous slide. Uh, Sorry. Um, yeah, about the second term. So is the R of T generated with uh, with the flow ODE or is it like a noise perturbed? Uh, actually, it's equivalent. Uh, but in our framework, we choose the no no noise. Term. Noise condition. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So this is like trying to establish, okay, because we OD... use a DDPM. You can see that okay. we use the noise predictor model here, but 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 it, uh, uh, typically it is equivalent, right? So so uh, and there are uh, uh, you 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 hear me that there are uh, other thing we need to pay attention is that actually the sampling process is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the for the the ODE uh, uh, is uh, theoretically uh, should uh, should e equal uh, e equivalent to the the PDE, right? But actually, uh, in the during the sampling process, uh, there are some difference. Uh, you need to carefully tune your your sampling process with the, for example the the coefficient of the PDE, uh, and the, you you can ensure that you can sample some for example, uh, physical enough. Uh, structures. Otherwise, uh, we 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 usually sample the structure uh, very unphysically, you know. Okay. So that's that's uh, that's what another thing you need to pay attention to. Got it. That's very cool. 
So can you give me some intuition on what does the partial partial time derivative of the score mean? Like, um, what sort of plan is like partial density, you know, is equal to, you know, divergence, blah, blah, blah. Yes, like, uh, but but it, it, it's, it's, it's a little detail. So, so oh, okay, I rather- okay, got it. I, I will read maybe, the paper maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe we, we can discuss offline, but uh, we have uh, some, some contents behind. Yes. So, Sorry, but I, still, I just want to- Thank you. Uh, yeah, still, yeah. just one question about this. What is M? I understand that this is some kind of discretization of the like state space, uh, but do you actually use this formula for the optimization? And if so, how you choose M and- what is like is it a discretization of the prior like of the noise function from which you start or what exactly it is uh sorry i'm not very uh okay can, just, can you can, can you type your, your, the, your... Yeah, yeah just, just what does the m increment stands for so you, you uh, have the, the t1 the trajectory step and the m what what is okay m? Uh, 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 R is the, 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 the confirmation, and I'm actually in terms of the, for example, whether this, this should, uh, for example, obey the, for example, Rn means that your R should obey with, from the, the, the equilibrium distribution. And uh, the N is the sample size, uh, for example, here, you, you need to calculate the, the N, sum N, right? Because that uh, all of these N samples need to conform with the equilibrium distribution and uh, also for the M. Uh, but the difference is that here the R, the conformation, do not need to to obey for the equilibrium distribution because we, we call it the data free data free loss, right? So we, we don't need to, we, we can uh, theoretically <laughs> randomly choose the conformation uh, as long as it can be calculated for by the energy function. So so you can choose M. Uh, typically in the experience we choose M for for example. Or one thousand or some other numbers like that. See, so basically, M is like batch size. Um, Al almost. <laughs> uh, something like that. Maybe okay. it's uh, yeah, 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 something like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's let's show you some. Uh, what 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 I personally think is very interesting result. Uh, for for this paper, um. The first one is the conformational sampling, uh, uh, protein conformation sampling. Uh, actually, uh, this protein is the the uh the uh, is called main protein of uh, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, it's a very important uh, uh, uh very important uh target protein uh to treat the SARS-CoV-2. You know, if 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 you know Paxlovid, uh, main protein is the target protein of the Paxlovid, uh, and uh. Uh, uh, just like I said, the microdynamics simulation is very costly, uh, and uh, very few organization has this, for example, resource uh, to do long enough uh, uh, simulation. Uh, but SASCO2 is very important. Uh, we all know that. So, so here is an organization called uh, Folding at Home. Uh, they do very long enough uh, simulation to get the equilibrium distribution of the main parties. Uh, and you can see the control. Uh, actually, it simulates uh, two point six uh, milliseconds, uh, but it takes <laughs> sorry seven uh, seventy GPU years. Uh, and you can see the control line. Uh, you can see that it is generated by the 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 MD simulation and uh, reached the to the equilibrium distribution. And uh, you can imagine that uh, it is the ground truth of this uh, protein. And we we just uh, simply project by 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 Tika uh, into two dimension to 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 draw this uh, control map uh, according to the density, and uh, we use the DIG uh, distribution conformer uh, to sample the conformation of the main proteins. Uh, actually, we we only use eighty GPU days. Uh, we can sample uh, we can sample uh, conformations uh, to recover about um, seventeen percent of the this distribution. And we also can cover these three peaks uh, or valleys or, or states of the main parties, uh, just uh, only use the uh, 18 GPU days. And uh, I want to emphasize something uh, extra about this sampling uh, process. You can, uh, you can uh, to see, see this uh, animation again, uh, you can see that uh, the yellow point, each each one appears of this yellow point coming out 
it's typically a an a independent and uh, identically distributed sampling. Uh, this is very different. This is what I call that a st statistically independent sampling. Uh, this is very quick to recover the distribution. And if you uh, you can imagine that how MD simulation this uh this method uh, some some like this method is a statistically uh dependent sampling. Uh, how this can generate the the, the ground truth is actually, for example, from from one point and then sampling from around this point, uh, you know, a very long long trajectory and a very lucky, uh, it jumped to another <laughs> peaks or valleys, uh, and then uh, sample for a very long time and then jump uh, jump back and then uh jump over to, uh, long enough to reach the, the equilibrium, uh, then uh, we can tell them that uh, this oh wow this this is reach the, the equilibrium and to obtain the equilibrium distribution. Uh, this is statically dependent sampling. But for DIG, uh, statically independent sampling is very easy to we just uh, uh, sample, for example, maybe uh, 40 uh, thousand of the structures, we can recover most of the distribution. And uh, the second thing I want to emphasize is that uh, if we use alpha for 2 to predict the structure, you can see that this yellow star, actually we can only predict one state of this protein, right? Obviously, it cannot reflect any <laughs> information of the distribution. Actually, there are five points because alpha 4 2 release five uh, model checkpoints. So, so we can predict five different uh, structures and uh, four at here and one at here. And uh, another thing I want to, the, the third thing I want to emphasize is that uh, maybe not in in this uh, figures, but uh, in another uh, figure, uh, another uh, SARS-CoV-2 protein. Uh, the figure is in the paper. Maybe you can see that. I, I didn't get this paper today. Uh, but uh, it's also another protein in the SARS-CoV-2. It's called spike protein. Uh, and uh, the MD simulation can generate also generates the ground truth uh, distribution. Uh, and uh, 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 it's more like, for example, four area. One, two, three, four, four area of the distribution in the two dimensional, and actually, if you can, if you project the uh, experimental structure, uh, which means that the structural biologist uh, to to determine the uh, determine the structure in the experiments, wet lab experiments, uh, only all the experiments uh, structure can uh, fall into the first three distribution, a uh, first three area. But not for the uh, the fourth area, which means that the fourth area is generalized by the MD simulation. And our model never seen uh, any one frame of the MD simulation can also sample to the fourth uh, all of these four distribution, which means that DIG can also generalize uh, to the new. New, 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 new confirmation. Uh, in this case, in the spike, uh, spike protein press, and also, uh, this, uh, uh, this result is very, uh, interesting. Uh, this page, uh, this page is actually about sampling for, uh, these four proteins, and the, uh, characterize uh, of these proteins is that they all have more than two, uh, two or more than two, uh, experimentally observed stable structures. Uh, this idea actually is the, the, the PDB ID, if you, you're familiar with the PDB. Uh, so uh, if you use uh, uh, the, the, the alpha for to predict, you will most likely to only get one structure or to get a, a, a medium structure or something else. But our model can easily sample all of the, this uh, stable structures. Here I want to emphasize two, uh, two cases. The first one is here. Is this one uh, the human B rough kinase? If you <laughs> remember, uh, alpha four two can uh, fail uh, failed uh, in this case, right? And uh, uh, it can only predict a uh, middle uh, middle state, but DIG can very easily to to predict the the the, uh, the very easy to sample both of the on and the off states. And the second one is the this one, uh, the LMRP membrane protein. Notice that the ID. Below, uh, actually, uh, it's not PDB ID. It's called DRAF. What what does it mean? Uh, actually, uh, this protein, uh, uh, this structure, this yeah. state, this state, uh, uh, does not observe in the experiments. But 
structural biologists speculate that it may have such a structure. So what they do, so what structural biologists yeah. do, they, they, first of, they use alpha photo 2 to predict the structures. Of course, most of the result is uh, just like this, uh, this because this is the new, the 61Z is a, a more stable structure and the uh, alpha 2 will most likely to predict this set. But if you, for example, perturbate the input, uh, give it a lot of augmentation or something else, a random seed or something else, very, very few cases, if you're lucky enough, if you are lucky enough, you will get a structure like this, this one. So, so uh, and then structural biologists see this structure. I say it, it, it makes a lot of sense, uh, sense. Uh, because that uh, some, for example, uh, family of this membrane protein uh, shows very likely a structure like like this this structure. So this is an uh, evidence uh, that alpha four two uh, can also uh, predict to, for 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 generalize to to unseen structures, uh, unseen states. But very interesting. If you use DIG, you can very easy and uh, even free to obtain two confirmations very quickly, uh, very very easy. So so that's that's uh, please note that this these confirmations have not been seen in the training data set, but are generalized. So so it's very interesting. Okay, let's move to the next page. This is two animation uh, about the transition pathway. Uh, you know that uh, some people. Uh, not only care about the, for example, the beginning or the end of the, the transition, but also want to see the transition pathway, right? For example, you 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 do a dynamic simulation, you can see the how how they transition, uh, through a low energy low energy path, right? And uh, this can be also very easy to obtain, uh, by DIG, because that we can very simply to uh, let me play this video again. Uh, we can, for example, we can simply and uh, uh, how we obtain the transition pathway uh, with, for example, low energy, which means high probability, right? It's very easy. You can simply uh, do the interpolation in the hidden state, in the Gaussian space. And uh, it, you, you know what generative models do is that uh, mapping uh, a simple distribution to a complex distribution, right? So the, a pathway with high probability in the simple distribution also project to a uh, a uh, 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 high probability in the in the uh, tra transition way in the in the in the complex distribution. So so it's very easy to generate uh, some some transition pathway animation like this. And this is the uh, protein ligand binding sampling uh, case. Uh, this is one uh, case of the diffusion process. Uh, you can sample enough to get, uh, for example, uh, an ensemble of the how this uh, molecule will bind uh, into this. A protein pocket, and then you can calculate uh, for some, for example, macro, ma macroscopic uh, to determine whether the binding affinity is good or bad or how to optimize them. And uh, this is also very uh, interesting. Uh, this is a catalyst uh, absorption sampling uh, uh, case. Uh, this is the diffusion process mm -hmm. of how the, the, the absorbate will be absorbed uh, in the catalyst. It's very likely uh, for it, it's very similar to the 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 ligand binding problem. Uh, you can imagine that the 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 absorbate is the ligand, and the catalyst the surface uh, is the 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 pocket is is the is the uh, is the the protein, uh, and then the absorption uh, process is actually very similar to the ligand binding pro uh, uh, process. And uh, but but the most uh, interesting is uh, this page. Uh, this page actually as, uh, 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 demonstrates that the density estimation of this model. Uh, you can see that uh, in the uh, bottom one, uh, this, this row is the DFT calculator. If you're familiar with the DFT, it's the density functional theory. It's very high accurate uh, quantum method to, to calculate the quantum properties of the, the yeah. system. So, so actually, uh, the DFT, uh, the, uh, the this one, uh, this row is the DFT calculate result of the density, and uh, the second row uh, is the result calculated by DIG. Uh, just uh, use the uh, as the uh, density estimation method I mentioned before. Okay, so we run out of time, so let me 
accelerate. So uh, this is the last page, I think. Uh, it's the inverse design I talk about. It's very also very interesting. You can uh, we 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 do this in a carbon structure data set. Uh, you can imagine that there, there are a lot of uh materials uh based on carbon atoms. Uh, for example, the graphite uh, structure and also the diamond structure. Uh, in the in the in the uh in the data set. And uh, for example, if we use DIG to train on this data set. We can do unconditional sampling, right? Uh, for example, uh, the uh, let me see. Uh, actually, the sorry, not not here. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, if we train a DIG in this data set, we can have the unconditional sampling. But uh, if we, for example, try to sample some uh, structures with desired property. Just like for example the banding gap, uh, the band gap. Band gap is actually for example some some properties that related to the electronic uh, or some some other properties. I, I'm not very familiar with, but uh, you can see that the graph has the band gap relative uh, 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 around with uh, zero, uh, uh, but the diamond uh, with the, the four for EV. Uh, and you can see that for example if we condition on zero, then then the structure will be almost uh, uh, sampled uh, with zero EV band gap. Uh, and if we condition on four EV, uh, then the, the model can sample uh, enough uh, structures with a higher, higher band gap uh, with, of the structures. And this is also very important to the uh, statically independent uh, sampling as well. Uh, you, you know, the graphy and the diamond, uh, they are very huge. Uh, energy barrier, right? You can imagine that you you buy a diamond, and it will take a billion years to to trans tra, tra, uh, transit to a uh, graph, right? Uh, to so so it's a very high energy barrier. But um, uh, if you you want to simulate this transition, uh, you will take I don't know how many how many times or how many years. Uh, but if you have the statically independent sampling you can you, maybe you can only sample two structures then you can obtain one graphite and one same diamond that's the the attractive point of the the statically independent sampling okay sorry we ran out of time so this is the last page uh, i want to take this chance as uh, first of all very appreciate that so i can be invited to share this work uh, in your seminar and I want to take this chance to introduce or uh, this is a new initiative uh, in the Microsoft research. Uh, it's called AF Science, uh, actually led by uh, Chris Bishop uh, to mainly focus on the, the fifth uh, paradigm of the scientific discovery. So, so that's all. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Shuxin, for the great talk and like the overview of um all the work that's uh, that's been going on. And I think it's uh, super cool to have like this broad overview of, of what you're doing and what Microsoft Research is doing. Um, a quick question here, like uh, the AI okay. for science in Microsoft, uh, I thought it was only in uh, in Europe, in the Netherlands. Um, is, do they also have a part uh, in China for the AI for science? Yeah, uh, we have uh, a lot of, um... Uh, sites uh, in the Microsoft Research Ethics. Uh, for example, okay. some teams in, in Berlin, uh, led by Frank Loy, uh, one team in Amsterdam, uh, uh, Netherlands, one team in, in Cambridge, uh, one team in Beijing, one team in Shanghai, and also one team in Redmond, I, I think. Uh, there okay. is a cross geo uh, initiative. It's very it's, interesting uh... to work here. <laughs> you, you know, you meet. Uh, average culture, uh, 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 a lot of different background people to discuss, to brainstorming. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy and learn a lot from, from my, my colleagues. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think uh, it's one of the groups doing the coolest science in, in the field. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed your, your talk and your recent papers. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, Thank you is there anyone in the audience that has a question, or shall we end here? Uh, I I can quickly reply some uh questions uh in the chat. Uh, 
Uh, I see here is some 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 here here are some 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 questions. Maybe I can quickly answer them. Mm, so first of all, thank you all again very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to to have chance to present here. And the the the, the first question is what's the input here? Uh, I guess the question is that what's the input of the the DIG model? Actually, you need to give it a random uh, Gaussian noise of the structure, uh, just like this uh, each diffusion model uh, in the conformational space. Actually, we do the diffusion in the Euclidean uh, equilibrium space, but actually there are a lot of improvements room uh, room to improvement. For example, uh, maybe we can model in the the diffusion space in the for example torsion angle space or something else to 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 improve the the, the performance. Uh, there are a lot of uh, works to demonstrate that there are better way to 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 model in the the uh, conformational space. And uh, another thing you need to input is uh, we call them a uh, descriptor of the molecular system. Uh, but actually, it's, for example, for the protein system, you can simply input uh, an amino acid sequence, just like alpha 4 2 And in, for example, in the material, uh, in the catalyst case, uh, you, can, you can give it, uh, in, in our case, you, we, we just uh, simply give it uh, an initial uh, frame uh, to describe uh, this molecular system. Uh, whatever you, you can give it uh, uh, as long as you can describe your mo molecule system, then the, the model can somehow the equilibrium distribution with you. And uh, the next uh, next question, do you continue to add, add the issue? Yeah, we, we, we need to, um, uh, actually in the diffusion process, uh, the noise is uh, gradually enlarged uh, and in the inverse uh, diffusion process. Uh, in the reverse diffusion process, uh, so there are a uh, denoising uh, uh, process. Uh, you you will gradually denoise uh, the noise. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I understand that you denoise. I, I meant that you also add some noise even for the denoise sample, but maybe that's not the case. I will just uh, read a little bit more myself. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can I can answer the question. Okay, so M is uh, answered. How many of the DOF? Uh, what do you mean that? Uh, maybe uh, John, you can you can. <laughs> sorry, what was what, what is the DOF? You you can you can. Uh, okay, diamond by band, band graph is actually around five point five. Really, <laughs> I'm I'm not a material scientist. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will I will have a check uh, with that. Vanilla DFT doesn't compute bank up. Yeah, uh, we use uh, actually in the inverse design uh, uh, inverse design uh, uh, experiments, uh, we use a very simple model called M3Net uh, in the Azure service, Microsoft Azure service that can predict uh, 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 the band gap of the material. Uh, and uh, we uh, we use that to to do the uh, classifier guided sample uh, to sample with structure with the desired properties. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, how were you able to re regularize the energy score? Mention of other regularize the energy scores. Uh, I'm not very uh, clear with this uh, regularized means, but uh, if you uh, say about, for example. Uh, how we trade off the energy loss and the database loss. Uh, actually, uh, we mainly for the uh, so the database loss. Uh, we don't need to take additional additional efforts or pay additional attention to that because it's very stable and easy to train. But for the physical informed loss, uh, we need to very carefully uh, take care of that to solve the numerical tricks. Uh, numerical issues and also the optimization issues, just like I mentioned before. So next question, what is the descriptor for the conformational sampling and the binding pulse sampling, just uh, the sequence? Uh, that's a cool question. Uh, so actually, it's a descriptor of the conformational sampling. For example, the protein conformational sampling is exactly the same with the uh, alpha 4 2 uh, We simply gave the amino acid sequence. Uh, and uh, and actually, oh, uh, one important thing is that uh, because that the resource or computational resource is very limited. So we don't do any training 
for the evil former parts in the alpha fold two. Uh, it's very costly uh, for the memory costly and uh, the computational cost. So we just uh, simply, you can see that it is a pre-process of the uh, amino acid uh, with the evil former because that the input of the evil former is a sequence and also the MSA. Uh, you need to use the MSA template search or something as I'm not very familiar with that. Uh, and the output of the MS, uh, the evil former is the sequence pair and a sequence representation and a pair representation. And we simply pre-process all the amino acid sequence uh, with the uh, sequence pair, a uh, sequence representation and the serial representation, and we collect all the protein mapped to the those representation. And we simply use these representations as the descriptors uh, to feed into the, the, the graph form. Uh, it, it's very natural because that Graformer can take take in with the, the pair representation as well in the Bell's term if you look at the, the Graformer paper. Uh, that's the conclusion sampling. And for the binding pulse sampling, uh, this is a little different because that we uh, do the binding pulse sampling with all item model modeling. But not the, the, the cost green, for example, alpha 4 2 is a cost green model, right? Uh, it's only modeling the, the amino acid, but for the binding pulse, we, we use all items. So, so the input of the pocket is actually, uh, for the pocket, we, we gave it a initial state, a structure of the pocket. And for the uh, ligand, uh, we simply gave it a 2D graph, a 2D graph or a smell of this a small molecule, and uh, we can uh, begin with a random structure of this molecule, but we need to know the, for example, the atom type, the the the, the bond, chemical bond of this this molecule, uh, and then we can diffuse of the the binding pulse. Okay, Dominic, uh, I think I uh, answer all these questions. Yep. So you know, thank thanks a lot for going through all the questions, and I know it's very very late in China right now, so. Um, thanks so much for making the time. Thank you. I think... Thank you. Thank you all. Very, very happy to be here. Thank all right. Much. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see you in a, in a couple of months or a couple of years again at the reading group, I suppose. So... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Dominic.